We've already talked about several movies and to finish with this topic for now, we should talk about all the movies in the same video. Here we are going to consider all the movies of the franchise, no matter if they are canon or not. In this video I am going to include the 1995 movie, the Turbo movie, the 2017 movie and I am also going to include the special episode. We know that this special episode is a long episode, but for some reason Netflix has categorized it as a movie and this is why we must make the comparison to know if we can actually categorize it as a movie. We know there is another supposed Power Rangers Samurai movie, but the only thing that has categorized this special episode as a movie is its name since they put the movie at the end of the title. I must say that, even if you put the movie to a project, it doesn't mean that it can be classified as a movie and besides that, this episode only has a duration of 45 minutes. This is basically the same thing that happens with the special episode, the difference is that everywhere else it has been listed as a movie and any Power Rangers information page has it in the movie category. Let's start with the first movie, the one that was released in 1995 and the one that started this entire list of the movies in the franchise. This movie was made with an investment of $15 million and grossed $66 million in total. Even though this seems like a small amount of money, it is quite a lot of money for a Power Rangers movie, and this is going to be proven when we talk about the collections of the other movies. Let's remember that it was 1995 and from that date until now, inflation has changed things. This movie has a running time of 96 minutes which is full of action, drama, transformations, fights and just a little bit of comedy. The positive thing that this movie had is that it had the advantage of having the Rangers that we already knew from the series, it also had a lot of transformations, and they added a lot of fights in the course of the entire story. Another positive thing is that we were able to see a new villain that made the old villains like Rita and Lord Zed look ridiculous. With this new villain we could feel that the rangers were truly in danger and had to travel to another planet in search of a new power to help them defeat this evil monster. We could also feel the fear of losing Zordon since for the first time he was at risk of dying and that is why the rangers had to act fast. For me, the most positive thing about this movie was the new costumes, which were made of a more resistant material and made the Power Rangers look like real powerful heroes. The negative things that this movie had were its special effects, which we can understand that at that time there was not much technology to create something so good, but with such a low budget it was impossible to create something impressive. Let's remember that at that time there were other movies that were also using computer-generated special effects and they were excellent. The difference in quality between these special effects was the budget because with only 15 million dollars you can't make something impressive. Another negative thing that this movie had was the way the Power Rangers had to defeat the villain as we didn't get that awesome ending that we are used to seeing. They basically had to take the monster into space to be destroyed by a comet and this makes the rangers look very weak and they don't have the power to defeat a monster with their own weapons. This act took away the credibility of the rangers and made them look like they didn't have the ability to save the earth since the comet was a huge fluke that was obviously created with the power of the script. Let's now talk about the second movie in the franchise and the first movie to be canon, the Power Rangers Turbo movie. This movie was the start of a new season, which unfortunately, has not been to the liking of many fans and perhaps this movie may have been to blame for that. When you start some path in the wrong way, it is very difficult for you to straighten that course and in the end, you can end up wrong. I want to say that this is not my opinion, I don't hate the movie, although I must also say that it is not the best. 
The Power Rangers Turbo Movie has very few good things, but it also has a lot of negative things, and this makes the movie a failure even though it had the potential to be the biggest hit of all. This movie was released in 1997 with a running time of 99 minutes, had a budget of $8 million and grossed almost $10 million. Basically, on the financial side it has been the worst failure of all since it only generated a profit of less than $2 million. Just so you understand the big difference, the first movie made a profit of $51 million and this all happened around the same time, so there is no inflation difference. The positive thing is that the costumes and turbo helmets are excellent. Another good thing is that the central story idea is very interesting even though the dialogue filler and silly comedy had a very negative impact. I also really liked the final villain of the movie, although the main villain was not suitable for this story, and it would have been better to have a serious and scary villain from the beginning. The negatives are many, the Zords, the excessive comedy, the Blue Ranger, the scarcity of battles, the few transformations, and the terrible special effects due to the low budget. Let's talk about the 2017 movie, a movie that is obviously not canon and that its failure was so big that they had to cancel the second part. This movie had a budget of $105 million and grossed $142 million. This means that it had a profit of only $37 million, an impressive figure if we compare it with the first movie. As we said before, the first movie had a total profit of $51 million, basically $14 million above this 2017 movie. In addition to this, we must add the inflation since with this the difference would be very wide and only with this you can already understand why the 95 movie is still number one. The problem with this movie was not the budget since with 105 million dollars they managed to make some incredible special effects and this we must accept. Even if this movie was not a Power Rangers movie, we could say that it was a very good movie because the biggest problem it had was that they erased the essence of what the franchise is. The Rangers were rebels, everything just happened by chance, and they changed the entire original Mighty Morphin story. Finally, let's talk about the special episode to know if it can be classified as a movie or if it is simply a mistake. The first thing we must say is that it is not even an hour long, which means that it cannot be categorized as a feature film. Another thing is that the style of the entire episode is basically like a normal episode since the recording style is not cinematic. According to the information I could find, the budget for this special episode was $20 million, which makes it clear that with this budget it was impossible to create a filming with the quality of a movie. I don't want to be misunderstood, I love this special episode, but we are only talking about whether we can classify it as a movie and this budget is not a movie. We know that the first two movies were made with less money, but let's remember the inflation issue since in 2023 20 million dollar means nothing. In conclusion, the 1995 movie has kicked all their asses, in profits, in story, and in essence.